Welcome to our comprehensive exploration of the Wellhausen Hypothesis. In this seventh part of our series, we dive into the complex world of historical dating and the controversies surrounding it. The Wellhausen Hypothesis, a cornerstone of biblical criticism, has long stirred debate. Its proponents lean heavily on conjecture, especially when establishing the chronology of biblical texts. Julius Wellhausen, the architect of this hypothesis, asserted that the priestly source, one of the Torah's alleged sources, was a late addition. This claim, however, rests on shaky ground, riddled with assumptions rather than hard evidence. Much of Wellhausen's argument hinged on linguistic analysis. He and his followers interpreted the language of the priestly source as indicative of a later period. It's crucial to note that these conclusions were influenced by the historical and academic milieu of the 19th century, a time when theories of religious evolution were on vogue. The hypothesis posited that Israel's religion and its scriptures evolved linearly, from prophecy to law. This linear model oversimplified a complex religious landscape, failing to account for the diversity and richness of ancient Near Eastern traditions. One of the most contentious aspects of Wellhausen's framework was his dating of priestly concepts, especially those related to sacrificial practices, to the Second Temple period. This stance directly contradicts earlier biblical narratives, such as Abraham's tithe to Melchizedek and Jacob's vow in Genesis. The assumption that the concept of sacrifice was a late development doesn't hold up against the backdrop of ancient cultures. For example, Egyptian rituals, predating the Israelites, were already rich in detail and strict in observance, similar to what's described in Leviticus. Furthermore, Wellhausen's approach seemed at odds with his view of the prophets, who often emphasized moral principles over ritualistic observances. This paradox within his own hypothesis points to a potential oversight in his understanding of ancient religious dynamics. Evidence from other ancient civilizations also challenges Wellhausen's chronology. Mesopotamian texts, for instance, provide ample proof of detailed sacrificial practices, similar to those described in the Pentateuch. Wellhausen's reliance on textual omissions as evidence further complicates his theory. He interpreted the absence of specific rituals or practices in certain texts as indicators of their later origin. However, this method is fraught with pitfalls. The absence of mention doesn't necessarily imply non-existence or later development. A key example is the tithe. Wellhausen argued that its absence in certain texts pointed to a later introduction. Yet, earlier references like those in Chronicles, Tobit, and Jubilees, as well as Jacob's and Samuel's mentions of tithing, suggest a far more ancient origin. Moreover, Wellhausen's assertion that additions to texts are more likely than omissions lacks a solid foundation. Every sacred text has a context and a purpose, and not every detail or ritual might have been deemed necessary for inclusion. Wellhausen's hypothesis was also influenced by contemporary scientific theories, notably the evolution theory in biology. He applied a similar evolutionary model to the development of religious texts and practices. While innovative, this approach risked oversimplifying and misrepresenting the complexities of ancient religious texts. As we delve deeper into the nuances of the Wellhausen hypothesis, it's evident that while the hypothesis was groundbreaking for its time, it also had its limitations. Its reliance on speculative assumptions rather than concrete evidence has led to ongoing debates and revisions in biblical scholarship. In our next segment, we will examine how these theories have been challenged and revised over time, reshaping our understanding of biblical history. Thank you for joining us in this deep dive into the Wellhausen Hypothesis. Stay tuned for more insights in the next part of our series.